Seorong raises her hand and asks Ji Yu if his IGN is peace and not undies. Seriously, Seorong, you're the one who forgot his IGN and stuck with calling Ji Yu undies. Ji Yu confirms that his character's name is Peace. He asks if Seorong really didn't know since they've been together in a party right from the time they first met. Seorong explains that Ji Yu's profile was set to private, so his name won't really appear even if they're together in a party. Sa Rung says that most players wouldn't really add others whose profiles are set to private. Because of this, she thought of him as a complete newbie, but for Ji Yu, it only means that his secretly OP persona was still a success if it managed to fool Captain Love. This reaction only irritates Sa Rung, and she scolds Ji Yu. She physically reminds him that he should never lie to her ever again. What a way to show affection. She finally stops as she thinks of Ji Yu's IGN, her lips curl up to his smile as she considers how perfect the love and peace combination is. Ji Yu recovers from So Ron's assault and asks if she said anything. She says it's nothing and urges Ji Yu to continue his story. Ji Yu continues and tells how he actively chose to live a different life within the game. Even though he was at the bottom tier, Ji Yu didn't mind and just did whatever he wanted. He gets into fights despite his low level and never holds back from saying what he wants. Wait a minute. That's the same guy he hit with his stick the first time he got reinforced to plus 99. Not caring for the consequences led Ji Yu to receive backlash for his actions. Being the type who does whatever he wants, even when building up his character, that's why others get pissed at how he's playing the game. Eventually, people kicked him out or stopped accepting him into their party. But this treatment doesn't affect our MC. Instead, he curses and ignores them. Ji Yu smiles as he tells So Run that games are meant to be enjoyed. Putting up with people inside the game on top of those who are already in real life is nonsense for Ji Yu. He does not conform to the norm and instead enjoys things his way. This type of mindset slowly changed him in real life as well. He used to run away from reality, but now he has changed so much that he can willingly tell his story to others. Yep, he started with Star, now he's also sharing his story with So Rung. Ji Yu admits that a small part of his past self is still within him which is why he puts himself down whenever he becomes the center of the topic. He adds that this is also why he can't imagine how anyone would like him. He scratched his head, already assuming that So Rung must be disappointed for liking a loser like him. This, of course, was immediately rejected by So Rung. She assures Ji Yu that she's not disappointed and the fact that he's sharing his story with her like this makes her happy. Her sudden movement to get close to Ji Yu causes her to slip and tumble forward, Sa Rung was a bit hurt and surprised, and Ji Yu asked if she was alright. The two have fallen into yet another awkward position, which screams Chapter 21 all over again. Sa Rung accidentally grabbed Ji Yu's shirt, exposing him when they fell. The two are so close that they are literally breathing the same air. Like the go-getter Sa Rung is, her reason snaps, making Ji Yu flinch. Ji Yu tries to make her think things over, but Sa Rung ignores this and grabs Ji Yu's arm and shoulder into a hold literally pinning him down with her astounding strength from idol training. I didn't know idols could be this strong. Ji Yu struggles and tries to calm her down, but these thoughts fly all over when he sees So Rung closing in. His heart starts beating loud and fast, just like Sa Rung's heart. The two blushing fools gaze at each other, and Ji Yu stutters as he weakly tries to stop her. It's the modern world, people. Gone are the days when men have to woo women. Nowadays, a woman has to pin down the man to get him. Their lips almost touched, but they were stopped by a horrendous figure outside the window. Apparently, the person who is stopping them from progressing further is none other than Se Rung's manager. They were so shaken that the two fools screamed their hearts out while holding onto each other. Lol. This reminds me of that Junji Ito-like scene from the True Beauty Manwa. Sa Rung's manager tells them to stop, even though she struggles to maintain her balance while wearing heels on the edge just literally outside the third floor. This horrific scene completely stopped the two fools from thinking any sort of romantic thoughts. Right after that, they got scolded by the manager. She scolds So Rung for her indecency, and So Rung even tries to lie her way out of the situation. Her manager strictly reminds her that if their lips even touched, there'll be a literal punishment. For those who don't know, the age of consent in South Korea is 20 years. So Rung sweats as she is reminded how lucky they are that manager was there to stop them in time. So Rung finally admits her mistake. And now manager goes ahead and scolds Ji Yu for not thinking things through, being a wimp, and how he can't even say no properly. The scolding took long, it was already nighttime when they returned home. Manager yells at So Rung to wrap it up already, while Ji Yu waves goodbye to her. Blushing, So Rung dashes in for a hug, surprising Ji Yu, 
Our MC blushes at the contact, while So Rung says she enjoyed spending the day with him. As she turns back, she tells him that she'll meet him later in Chrono Life and appropriately calls him by his real name this time. Wow, after so many chapters, she finally calls him by his real name. Seeing her this way got Jiyu's heart thumping loudly once more. The door to So Rung's place shuts, but Jiyu still hasn't recovered from the heart thumping scene. Inside her place, So Rung's heart beats loudly and even her whole body is shaking. But she snaps out of her thoughts when she finds her manager's scary look. Her manager creepily asks who told her to hug him, and So Rung cries that she could explain. Like a zombie out for human flesh, the manager gets close to So Rung and grabs her. And the look on her instantly changes into a proud one. That was a complete 180. Manager compliments So Rung for doing a great job in making sure that the guy she likes would fall for her. Then she reminds So Rung that she can only hug him at most. Further than that is not allowed. So Rung agrees with her manager and molds over those words. She stares at her VR console and concludes she can do more than just hug Jiyu within Chrono Life. She laughs as she recalls her manager's words about how things happening in the game are not real, thinking that those were a mere foreshadowing of what was about to happen. This girl is turning into someone devious. Wearing the console, Se Rung plops into her bed, her heart beating so loud and fast. Yelling that Chrono Life is the best, she finally logs into the game. In the unit across So Rung's, Jiyu recalls the hug. His heart is racing as he remembers So Rung's last words to him. He held onto the game console and thought about how So Rung called him using his real name. With that, he lies on the sofa with the console on his head. The device checks his identity with his face still red. And just like So Rung, he yells how Chrono Life is the best. My ship is really sailing now. The game welcomes Peace and Eurus greets him right after he gets logged in. Peace, our MC, greets him back, acting like everything is normal. He comments on how Eurus does the same pose whenever he logs in. Eurus begs to differ, saying it's an entirely different pose. Eurus complains that he put in some research on those poses while Peace pulls on his cheeks. Peace admits he's only messing with him and continues the fan service by stretching Eurus' face. Love arrives and clears her throat to get Peace's attention. She comments on how he log in immediately. She's about to call them undies but quickly corrects herself and calls him Peace instead. You've heard that right. We'll call our MC by his proper IGN from this moment forward. Peace's heart starts racing at Love's arrival. Captain Love greets Eurus, and Peace finally lets go of Eurus' cheeks. Eurus greets the Demon King, asking how she's been since it has been some time since they saw each other. The two made small talk while Peace continued to blush. Looking at Love only reminds him of how beautiful she is and that any user passing by can't help but stare at her. Peace tries to shrug it off, but he still can't help but mull over the fact that the Sao Rung hand likes someone like him. A voice tells him to stop thinking that way, reassuring him of his own charm. Peace appreciates the compliment. After a short pause of loading, it only registered to them that Star arrived. Finally, the voice of reason appears. Star greets them in Eurus, swinging the dragon around. Star stops playing with Eurus and compliments Love for getting prettier. Simultaneously, Peace pats Eurus on the back with a fist to ease the motion sickness. Star stares at Love and glances at Peace. She then crouches beside Peace and whispers how sneaky he's become. She continues teasing him while murmuring and ends him by asking if he and Love got some alone time back in real life. Peace is surprised that Star can tell, but Star simply chucks it off as a woman's intuition. They finally stand up, and Star recalls that some guests were looking for them. Love and Peace are both surprised, and Star says that those guests are waiting for them at the inn they went to before. Star leads them to the inn, and Love wonders who it could be. Eurus and Peace each munch on a piece of meat as they walk together. This oddly reminds me of that ancient lizard anthropomorph steak that they were munching on back in Chapter 39. They soon reach the room where Peace's guests are waiting. Star opens the door to the inn's room, and inside are Riot and Leor. Peace greets them and gets right to the point of their visit. Riot also gets serious and says that in the last episode of Chrono Life, it would need the Heavenly Realm, Demon Realm, Human Realm, and the Strongest Dungeon the nest of Eurus. Right now, the beings representing the authority of these places are all within that room. Riot announces that clearing the last episode of Chrono Life requires these regions join forces. Peace and Eurus continue to munch on their meat, clearly unimpressed with what Riot just said. Riot says this is serious and the world's fate depends on this, so he can't be picky and accept whatever help he can get. The sin of sloth remembers something essential and walks to where peace is. Peace asks what Riot is talking about, and he and Love get surprised when Riot makes a grab down there. Our MC, being our MC, makes a face that I don't even want to describe anymore. 
Riot pulls his hand away, while Star doesn't have any idea what's happening since our good captain is covering her eyes. Riot says he knows he can be heard and tells someone to come out. He calls out for the leader of the ancient Anthromorphs, a dragon of the North Pole of Entador. Peace's face completely changes when the dragon lodging in his briefs finally makes a reappearance. The Anthromorph then speaks up, saying he'll take over the explanation. What's with this Manua? Why can't they make a Ventibur cute like Eurus or something? Ego-ranked equipment is a weapon or armor that has been enchanted with an ego, and it is known as the highest level of equipment in Chrono Life. As explained before, once a piece of equipment receives an ego, its durability becomes infinite. So aside from our MC's plus 99 reinforced wooden stick, the same rank applies to his briefs despite the zero defense. Yep, it's useless in a sense, but it also means it'll never get destroyed. Avenger's head popping out of there looks ridiculously gross that everyone in the room is quiet. Star asks what's happening and why her eyes must be covered. Love assures her that it is for Star's own protection. The Dryad of the North speaks once more and tells the story of the first continent of Chrono Life. Hearing a low voice from there, Peace doesn't understand how to feel about it and once again makes a face that would like to punch. Let's momentarily ignore our MC and focus on what Aventador has to share. Aventador explains that the continent of Chrono existed even before ancient times. The Blessed Land only knows of peace, and its species coexist harmoniously. There were humans, elves, dwarves, anthromorphs, and dragons. Of course, more species lived on this land, but everyone got along well despite this, and the one watching over them is their god. God loved the continent of Chrono, as well as the whole universe. Heste 389 is a star famous for its beauty across four galaxies. Wait, four galaxies? Can we expect more content out of this game? Back to the story. This was the place that Mother loved the most. But the peace in the land didn't last long. People waged wars, completely overthrowing the peace that once filled the continent of Chrono. God saw this and finally made his decision as he blasted energy into the air heading in multiple directions. Though he can't directly interfere, God chose to divide his soul into seven pieces, spreading them to indirectly influence the world. As Avendor speaks, Peace keeps on saying skip. Avendor pauses as he looks at Peace while Love and Riot look helplessly at our MC's rudeness. Having enough, Love chops Peace, making him faint. Or not. I'm sure our MC is just playing around since it's his captain's doing. Love urges Aventador to continue with his story since she's the type to read or watch a game's lore. Star remains clueless about what's happening before her while Aventador listens to Love. Captain Love asks if the seven Sin Boss monsters are the seven pieces of God's soul. Aventador confirms this but also reminds her that half of those seven sins are now gone. The only ones remaining are Eurus of Pride, Riot of Sloth, and Aventador of Greed. Aventador then clarifies that they might count him as dead since he already lost all his powers and only his soul remains. He then comments on how Riot might be the same as him. Riot confirms this since he has lost his halo and has fallen to Earth in exchange for his life. He adds how his powers as a seventh sin have also disappeared. Aventador looks at Captain Love and asks if it is the same for her. Love confirms that she's the same, except her abilities as the Demon King is obviously still there. She adds that Peace has only slayed the Seventh Sin back then, ensuring she survives the battle. Aventador agrees with Love's statement, saying that the human protected her while getting rid of the Sin. He adds how he saw all this while remaining inside. This statement makes Love and Peace question where this inside was exactly. See, our MC is still conscious despite the drool. Getting back to the main point, Aventador says that the Seven Sins was originally an immortal force that can move to new vessels after they die. This is what happened back when Yufa became the Sin of Rage and how the Sin of Veracity got transferred from Uriken to Aventador afterward. The Dragon of the North says no new Seven Sin will be born again. Love asks why, and Aventador sighs. He reveals how all of the duties of the Seven Sins have been fulfilled already. In the space where God resides, he is having leisure time when Luna arrives. Luna asks what God is deeply thinking of and God replies that he is thinking of her. The goddess of life only chuckles and lets him down by saying she already likes someone else and admits she is disgusted by what he just said. God takes this lightly, saying that he already knows of this, even saying she is into his little friend. God suddenly drops to the ground on fours and exclaims this tragedy. Luna ignores the exaggeration and asks why God calls Noob his friend when they've only met a handful of times. God stands up and says that friendship is not measured by the number of times they've met. He adds that this is why Luna doesn't have any friends, which only makes Luna curse at him. God sighs and says that it is true that they've only met a few times, but in those moments, God felt a sense of nostalgia and comfort as he interacted with him. 
He says the same goes for Luna, and he wasn't joking when he told her he was thinking of her. God recalled the time they first met. Flashback, people. We got ourselves a backstory. It was one of those days back when God watched the humans in their town. God was mulling over the fact that ancient times have passed. He has already punished the beings of Cronum for the seven sins, with the lives taken. A temporary peace followed, but this is not enough to change the people of Chrono, who continuously made the same mistakes after rebuilding civilizations. God sighs at this sight, admitting he is tired of it. He ponders if he should just slay everyone. A voice says, this sounds like a fun idea. The person who spoke was Luna. She asks God if she can join him in this, knowing full well that she is talking to God. This was their first meeting, and God was curious how Luna knew he was a god. Luna claims she is a regular user as she sits beside him on the ground. The girl adds how she will soon advance to a hidden class once she clears the quest to become the goddess of life. She says this with a smile, and in turn, God smiles widely at her words. Back to the present, God mentions how their encounter was fascinating. He was not left disappointed, for Luna did become the goddess of life and, afterward, the sin of lust. God walks, saying his decision to make Luna the sin of lust worked well enough in his favor because the abilities of the two titles worked well together. With Luna's help, it was easier for God to create powerful new versions of the seven sins, and each duty was fulfilled quickly. God raises a hand and cracks open the space. He smiles as he announces the completion of the great eye that looks upon the earth. God asks Luna how it feels to use its powers, asking for her feedback. Luna grins as she says that it was able to damage an admin with 99,999 stats to the point that he has run to the GM zone. She's referring to her fight with Buttman back in Chapter 23. Luna adds how no one can defeat that monster. God questions the term monster and sighs at how mean Luna is. He smiles as he announces that this is his body that has descended into the world. He then floats into the air, approaching his monster form, declaring that it is time to become one with it. Luna flies up into the air using her wings and halts God. She asks if he really intends to fuse with it when there's still one step left. God smiles and says that Luna will finish it for him. So he might as well fuse with it now. Luna stares at him momentarily and then smiles, saying he can leave things to her. God thanks her and pulls off his shirt, fixing his hair. God finally reveals his eyes. This character really should show his eyes more. He raises a hand and pierces his chest with it. He chants a few words, offering his soul to the monstrous vessel. He deepens his hold on his chest, announcing his intention to annihilate the world as they become one. Golden lights flash from where God is, and in an instant, his human-like form vanishes. Luna looks at where God disappeared, commenting on how the world's end has finally begun. Back to where our MC is, everything starts shaking. Peace smiles, realizing that it has begun. He's finally done fooling around. Peace smiles, saying that the boring narration should be done by now since it is now time for action. Outside, people are running away, screaming for help. Some say that the monstrous eye has started moving. Peace makes his appearance, gathering other players' elation. They comment on his cape and wooden stick, announcing his arrival. But once they saw a head down there, their expressions wholly changed. Peace doesn't care for the stairs and simply looks at the final boss of Chrono Life. He looks at it and recalls that he had seen it somewhere before. Eurus jogs his memory by reminding him how the goddess of life summoned it before them previously. Our MC's really forgetful. This colossal monster first appeared in chapter 16, and he saw it again in chapter 37, right after love became the new demon king. This fact interested Peace since it is like fate is pulling them to fight in the final battle. He commands Aventador to do his part this time since he's been living in his undies for some time now. The instruction confuses Aventador a bit, but he finally understands when Peace suddenly flashes blue light and uses Dragon Breath. Love is surprised that Peace plans to use the ultimate skill of the Dragon Race. The type of attack depends on the Dragon's element and having Aventador, the Dragon of North Pole, use this means. It'll be an icy breath. Love's heart beats fast in anticipation since this skill is the most romanticized skill in any fantasy world with dragons. The users around Peace also awaited the release of this fantastic attack. With enough energy, Peace commands to fire away. Avendador releases AC Breath while Peace disgustingly enjoys the moment of the attack's release. At this show of power, Love pokes her own eyes, thinking she'd rather go blind than see this discharge of ultimate skill. Someone help me delete this scene from my memory. Any wizard or witch out there who can cast me that memory charm, Obliviate. A giant blast of Dragon's Breath gets released, and Peace continues to make that disgusting look. He snaps back into reality, confused. Even Love, who has stains on her fingers and cheeks, 
is also confused. The colossal monster remains unaffected by the dragon's breath. Thinking that the attack wasn't enough, Peace grabs Aventador's face and pulls it up, questioning why it didn't work. My eyes badly need some cleaning after I narrate this. Just then, Leor and Riot arrive at the scene, commenting on how absurd he is. Riot reminds him how reckless it is to just throw an attack without using his brain. He then explains how the monster may look like it is in front of them. Still, it is actually located in a different plane, rendering his attack useless. Riot adds that it won't be long before that thing will cross over to the human realm. As if on cue, the colossal monster screams and attacks, but Hannah makes an impact, cracking the space that leads to the human realm. This astonishes most users, as its vast form finally looms over them. A notification appears before every user, announcing the last quest to protect the world from God. The rewards are unknown, but the phrase last quest makes most users question the plausibility of accomplishing it. Bah. Oh, the near end is getting all real now. Leor admits that this is different than what they've expected. Riot agrees, thinking that he expected it to happen later but not now when there was supposed to be a last step to do. His reaction suddenly changes when he realizes that God might have made an extreme decision. With this realization, Riot shouts at the modern brave warrior, telling him that they need an emergency meeting for this, so they should retreat first. But typical MC makes a disgusting expression of glee as he shouts. Lug tries to call him, but Peace ignores them and activates speed of light. His mind went haywire with all the dialogue, and his patience reached its limit. Seeing the enemy made him completely crazy, and he quickly hit the colossal monster with his wooden stick. The attack causes the enemy to falter and tumble while Peace shouts that plans are for weaklings. The monster ultimately falls back to the space where it came from. Wow. Is this really a final boss? It fell down with one swing from our MC. With the final boss on its back, Peace tells it to get up, not believing for a second that his attack already took it out. A cracking sound makes him look up. The cracking space is starting to close. Peace smirks at this perfect timing and swings his wooden stick. The blast hits the colossal monster, pushing it back to the other dimension. Peace smiles, saying they should fight instead in the monster's dimension, and uses speed of light again. He dashes to the other side before the crack regenerates completely. And with that, Peace and the colossal monster are now gone from the human realm. Love realizes what Peace did, and the other users are also awestruck at what happened. Riot complains at the brave warrior's recklessness, but he still smiles as he admits how Peace made the right choice this time. He says that fighting God in the Corona Continent would ultimately reduce the planet into nothing. In the other dimension, our MC thoroughly enjoys himself as he attacks the enemy. He commands a Venador, and the dragon complies by releasing an ice breath. Peace makes another weird pose and disgusting face as Aventador releases his dragon's breath. Peace lands on the ground, expressing the relief of attacking without holding back in that space. Out of nowhere, Peace gets sliced into three pieces as the enemy recovers. Unfazed, Peace activates healing factor and regenerates, again drawing our eyes with another horrific scene. Peace complains as his body combines, promising to make his enemy pay. He declares punishment. He suddenly leaps up despite the ongoing process of his regeneration. Despite his horrifying look, Peace attacks the enemy with his weapon making it tumble again. Peace's body finally combines properly and Peace quickly unleashes a million strikes on the monstrous form of God. Unable to evade the attacks, the enemy explodes at each impact. Back in the human realm, Love asks Riot where Peace went, and Riot says that the brave warrior is now in the godly realm. Love asks if the monster is really God. Riot confirms this, adding how it was stated in the quest window that popped up earlier. He explains that everyone must now protect the world from God. In this case, a term everyone turned into a single user. Panicked, Love says they should follow and help Peace. Riot sighs at this naivety, reminding her that the brave warrior is not to be underestimated, and not one person could help him at that moment. He says that even if Love, the Demon King, helps him, she will only be a hindrance. Love is adamant to help, reasoning that she got stronger and can simply stay in the back as support. This amuses Riot, but he still reminds her how the brave warrior's power is way above everyone else's. To make it simpler, Riot compares it to an error code. Unwilling to do nothing. She asks if they are only supposed to stay put while Peace finishes everything on his own. Riot claims there's nothing wrong with that since that's what Love has been doing all this time, whether it was the fight with Irican, Yufa, or Ventador. Ouch, the harsh reality. Riot sighs and admits this is what he wanted to say, but considering this is the last quest, everyone's strength is necessary. Love ponders on his words and asks Riot what exactly will happen, and he keeps saying this. 
Riot says he does not need to explain, for she will soon understand it. Beside them, Leor remains quiet as she recalls how the brave warrior saved her previously and how he manifested an understanding of her decisions. He even made the goddess of life heal her. The thought makes her blush, and her heart beats loudly. She hopes for his safe return while calling him her beloved. Oh no, please, no harem route. Though Riot and Love were engrossed in their own thoughts, they still heard Leor clearly. Riot sweats and questions his sister about this beloved she spoke of. Leor blushes at getting found out, but she readily admits that she is indeed referring to the brave warrior of the modern day. Riot questions his sister, but Leor says it's a secret. Desperate, he reminds his sister of her love for him, adding how he'd rather be loved by her than that vermin. Love says nothing, but her expression says it all. Leor chuckles at her brother's words, saying she was young back then. Undoubtedly, there's a new rival for peace's affection. Returning to our hero in the godly realm, the monster lies on the floor with its limbs missing. Peace complains at how anticlimactic this was. He then asks if Roach Lady agrees. Luna finally makes her appearance and greets Noob. Even our MC is not surprised anymore by her being there. Peace glares at her as he recalls the time they met, whether it was on the battlefield in her new goddess of life form or as the user who mercilessly cut him in half. It reminded Peace of how he actively played Chrono Life, all for the sake of getting revenge. He can only call it fate, thinking how even the last quest of the game is tied to this woman's existence, connecting the story's beginning to its ending. It was too much drama that Peace could only laugh like before. He aimed his reinforced wooden stick at Luna, announcing that she'll be punished for good this time. Luna welcomes this claim with a fond smile, calling her MC noob. Bursts of explosion resound and flash throughout the godly realm as Peace continuously throws attacks at Luna. The goddess of life easily dodges each attack, but as Peace gets closer, she chuckles and admits she can't avoid it for long. Peace ignores her words, and he cuts her in half with a swipe of his wooden stick. Luna only grins and uses her hidden skill, the creation of life. She regains her form and smiles, saying that dodging really was unnecessary, that skill is irritating. No wonder but man had a hard time with her before. Peace sighs at this and puts his wooden stick away. He scratches his head, recalling that her nickname is Roach. He gave her this nickname for this exact reason. So he grabbed her wrist, making Luna anticipate his following actions. Peace doesn't do anything for a moment, and Luna asks what he's doing. Peace seriously replies that he's making sure that she won't be able to run. His face suddenly changes, and a tentacle comes out of his mouth. The tentacle stabs Luna, and Peace uses his hidden skill, veracity. I'll never get used to seeing this. With this skill, he absorbed Luna's level and stats. The goddess of life tries to stop him but she gets sucked dry before she can even say anything else. Luna turns to ashes when a notification appears, announcing the failure of the skill. Peace turns his head a bit and finds that Luna is entirely unscathed. The goddess of life sighed since she was really expecting something else from him. She then explains how Erekin of Veracity did the same thing before, but ultimately failed since Veracity doesn't work on a body of a god. Luna lifts a hand and smiles at Peace, chiding him for playing with her innocent heart. She promises payback, but Peace only gets irritated with her. She uses the creation of life on the colossal monstrous form of God, and its body regenerates completely. The enemy stands up once more as it screams. Peace laughs this off, saying that he was expecting more, but was let down how he only has to fight the boss monster once more. Luna smiles at this, asking if he is unaware that a final boss typically has more than one phase. She also reminds him that veracity won't work against the enemy since it also has a body of a god. Announcing the start of Phase 2, the colossal monster rushes towards Peace to attack. Now it's become more of a proper game. I wonder how many phases does this enemy have? Peace gets slashed in half, making him curse at the existence of phases. He regenerates himself using Healing Factor and activates his unique attribute, Master Novice. Using the Soul of the Sword, he activates the Swordsman skill, Sheeted Sword Slash. Peace dashes toward the enemy and pulls out his stick to attack, creating a big blast in the process. The colossal monster screams in pain as it continues to burn. Luna holds her hair to keep it fixed during the blast and is surprised when she finally looks at God, who has a quarter of his body gone. The monster groans in pain while Peace exclaims his appreciation for his own handwork. Thinking he's finally done with Phase 2, he mockingly asks the goddess of life if Phase 3 is next. Luna looks down on him, admitting that Nu did good in destroying the body twice. Then she adds that it's only possible. Considering his weapon is the 99 reinforced wooden stick, she again lifts her hand, announcing that phase 2 is far from over. Luna uses the creation of life skill, 
reviving the monster. Uh. Phase 2 is a combination of the colossal monster and the goddess of life. Peace covers his eyes from the bright light created by the skill while cursing at the roach duo Luna then gently drops down to the ground beside Peace. Her curiosity getting the best of her made her ask him how she tasted when Noob used veracity on her. The question completely surprises Peace, making him blush. Luna hoped that Noob liked how she tasted. Back in reality, at the headquarters of Chrono Life, a staff reports how the goddess of life and peace is fighting on even ground. CEO Diokbe Choi reminds his staff that he has eyes and can see it for himself. He instructs the same staff to keep a close look at those two since one will surely emerge as the winner. Unconvinced, the staff asks if it was really okay to keep watch without doing anything. He suggests stopping them, but CEO Choi quickly rejects this. The staff reasons that there's no more game content following this. They also can't make any significant updates in the future. At this point, the company will end up shutting down once it's all over. CEO Choi chuckles good-naturedly at this but suddenly crushes the tobacco in his hand and scolds his staff for not making enough game content when he was paying them to do that. The staff defends himself, saying it was the wooden stick user's fault who's playing as if the game is on easy mode. He then reminded the agreement to have that weapon taken away. But it was the CEO who was against it. This, of course, angers his CEO. And his boss reprimands his staff homer style. Our CEO really is a gangster. Finally calming down, the CEO puts down his staff and says that he knew this would happen. And that's why he hired twice the number of developers. He is well aware that the doubled amount doesn't necessarily mean they would get twice the results. But he hopes they can work on emergencies with this number of staff. The staff fixes his tie as he complains that the doubled number of staff would only create a substantial financial loss for the company. CEO Choi takes new tobacco and lights it up, questioning how it would be a loss when they gain a lot as the number one game. He says the money is not the issue here. Instead, they should thank the users of Chrono Life for enjoying the game. The CEO adds how he is only reinvesting the money made back into the game so that they can ensure the users have a better experience within the game. This kind of thing for the CEO is not a loss at all. Oh, how I wish all game production companies are like this. The staff becomes momentarily speechless and says he wouldn't say more on the matter since doing so will only make him look like the villain. Irritated, the CEO says he shouldn't have talked back in the first place. The staff remains resolute, saying he is only worried about the other users who might feel that things are unfair because of the wooden stick user. He once again says that taking the wooden stick away might be the right thing to do. In return for the wooden stick, the company can offer the user an equal bonus within the game for surrendering the weapon. The CEO puffs on his cigar as he listens. He then asks his staff about a hypothetical situation. What if they open a restaurant business and one customer really enjoys their food there? By savoring each bite, they appreciated everything in each dish and had the ultimate dining experience. After seeing this in that customer, the CEO asks his staff if he would just suddenly stop serving them. That makes sense. The staff finally understands what his boss wants to say and answers that he can't do that. With that answer, CEO Choi smacks his staff on the head, asking how he could tell him to do something that the staff can't do himself. Having enough of his staff's ridiculous suggestions, he commands him to continue keeping an eye on them. Back to the godly realm, Luna says boom and Peace's lower part explodes. Peace is confused with what just happened, and Luna asks if he has never seen this divine power of hers. She explains how it can let her heal or choose to destroy life and how she used this back in the heavenly realm. Luna adds how New didn't get to see it, because he's off doing something else at that time. Yep, busy pretending to be weak and causing havoc in the castle of the heavenly realm. Peace only laughs, saying that this kind of damage is nothing to him. To prove his point, he uses healing factor, regenerating his damaged body. Irritated, Peace targets the gods of life first, dashing towards her. Luna only laughs at his impatience and tells him that he should first turn off the light. Behind him, the colossal monster's huge eye shines brightly with green light. Luna warns him that this attack will hurt. Peace looks back as the monster releases a blast of energy through its eye. He accepts the attack without moving until it stops. The smoke finally dissipates, and Peace remains standing despite the significant deduction on his HP. But unlike before, healing factor doesn't activate. Luna closes in, asking how painful the attack was. She smiles, commenting on how even his healing factor got suppressed. Peace only glares back at her, while Luna says healing factor can't grant absolute invincibility since it is flawed. She adds how there are also ways to get around the immunity to status effects. 
Luna then reminds him of the Psalm of Seraphim that was used against Noob back when he was fighting you for the warrior. Back then, the skill reduced Peace's stats to one-fifth of its maximum stats, and Eurus even complained about it. Luna explained how the skill wasn't a status effect. Instead, it alters the time around the target, making it effective against Noob. Luna continues to chuckle as she explains how the attack released by God is another way to get around Noob's healing factor. To explain further, the attack released just now was infused with God's divine power. Peace asks about it and probes if it is the same as Roach Lady's creation skill. Luna confirms this, saying her divine power is the creation of life, while God's divine power is destruction. Luna's eyes are slightly sad as she smiles at Noob. She says that the being who calls Noob a friend is none other than the God of Destruction. Woo. Finally, something else to refer him to. The monster form of the God of Destruction continues to release attacks on Peace, causing loud explosions in the godly realm. Peace dashes away to dodge the continuous attack, but God doesn't let him catch his breath and continues to blast attacks from his eye. Peace questions the fairness of the situation since one would usually have to pause between shots. That's right. Doesn't it have any CD? Peace can't do his usual style of charging forward because if he receives another hit from it, he'll surely die with his healing factor not a way to fight back. He dashes away, surprised that he's heading toward Luna. The goddess of life asks where Noob is going and uses her skill on him. As she utters the word boom, Peace suffers from the attack and thinks that he's definitely screwed. That skill is too OP, just what can counter it. With his deformed body and the god of destruction about to blast another laser beam with its eye, there's no way he can escape. Peace screams as he gets blasted by the attack from God. Back in the human realm, Leor is shamelessly daydreaming out loud. She squirms around as she thinks of where she and her beloved could spend their honeymoon. Riot asks if his sister even knows what honeymoon even means, and Leor smiles wide, saying that she does. She goes into full detail, but Riot can't bear to hear those words from his sister and quickly stops her. Love watches over this, pissed at how she has another rival. She can't help but think about slaying this witch before her. As the demon king, she is ready to wage war with the heavenly realm over this matter. Fed up with his sister's nonsense, Riot says Leor never even mentioned liking that sorry excuse of a human. Leor simply laughs it off, saying nothing needs to be said. She then recalls how the brave warrior whispered sweet nothings while staring at her affectionately, and how she has misunderstood him all this time. Uh. Hell. Oh. Riot must save his sis from falling deeper into her delusion. Riot asks if Leor is sure since she might have lost some intelligence points for getting smacked with that guy's wooden stick. Leor doesn't answer. Instead, she asks her brother what their child would become if she bore the brave warrior's child. She's curious whether their child will be a human or an angel. But after she thinks about it herself, she says it might be a half-angel. This stupefies Riot completely, but his sister doesn't notice and continues with her child-related questions. As if that wasn't enough, she asks her brother's opinion. This makes Riot wobble and fall to the ground, unable to bear any more of his sister's delusions. Leor shouts for her brother, and Love can only watch with a frown on her face. Star suddenly appears, commenting on how Love has a new rival. Love is initially surprised but recovers when she sees it as Star. Catelyn Love asks why Star is outside when she should have stayed inside the inn. Star smiles, saying she wanted to check things out since none of them came back after things settled down. In Star's arms is a crying Eurus, and his sniffling finally catches Love's attention. No. Why is our cute little mascot crying? Love is confused as to why he is crying and asks what happened. Star says she also doesn't know, and she just found him crying in a corner like this before going out. Love gets close to Eurus, asks what's wrong, and mentions how she thought he was with peace. Eurus speaks in broken words while hit cupping, and Love couldn't understand what he wanted to say. Seeing this, Star translates for him. She explains how Peace is in the godly realm fighting the enemy, and it being a different dimension means Eurus can't follow, so he is left on his own. Eurus nods to this, which only confuses Love more. That's one handy skill, Star. Love mentions that Eurus is Peace's ego sword, so he can just shift to his soul form and teleport to where Peace is. Eurus once more replies in broken words, so Star has to translate again for him. She explains how Eurus is stuck in a physical form and to return to his soul form requires permission from peace. Eurus once again nods to this, making love compliment Star for her excellent listening skills. Eurus cries out his worry for peace and starts biting his tail to comfort himself. Star pats him on the head to calm him down and assures him that undies will be fine. It's got love all somber and worried for peace. Going back to the godly realm, 
Luna expresses her amazement at how Noob is still alive after all that. Lying on the floor is our MC's head, groaning with the last few percent of his HP. Luna laughs at how pathetic he looks and says that the nickname Roach suits Noob better. Peace's hand is still intact and crawls its way to his head with a wooden stick in hand. Luna just watches this and laughs aloud at how the hand is the only thing that can still move. She smiles as she criticizes him with hateful words, yet is evident that she is sad with the way her eyes look at him. Luna should really just be honest for once. Her smile slowly disappears, filled with disbelief at how this is all Noob amounts to. Her usual amused voice starts to shake, asking him if this is all he can do. She calls him Noob, saying he's supposed to be the brave warrior who will save everyone. And deep inside, Luna hopes that she will be saved too. Tears fall from her eyes, and she repeats her question, if this is all he amounts to. Luna was about to say more, but the hand suddenly smacked his own head, stunning Luna speechless. All that's left of Noob is a hand holding the plus 99 reinforced wooden stick. Suddenly, a notification pops up announcing the activation of the healing factor. Flesh starts to increase and float around. It then combines and wriggles to form Peace's body. Of course, this all happens in its usual disgusting way. Peace groans as he regenerates and wriggles, his head forming into something similar to an alien's. Luna is apparently still not used to it and makes a face. After a few more wriggling, Peace regains his body, fully healed. Luna recovers from her disgust and asks how Noob activated the healing factor when it is being limited by the divine power attack he received. Peace smirks and reminds her of what happened before the skill was activated. By attacking himself before he ultimately perished, he was able to activate the skill. His attack doesn't have divine power and can be considered friendly fire. Hence, healing factor is activated. I'm proud of our MC, he's using his head in this match. Luna expresses her disbelief since she was sure the divine power attack could completely destroy its target's entire being. So even if Noob attacks himself, the divine power would make it impossible to recover his HP. Luma is so sure of this because of how the game calculates damage. To further explain, divine power attacks have higher priorities over regular ones. She spouts more reasoning concerning programming, but peace stops her from blabbing more. He suddenly makes a disgusting pose that is supposed to mimic the goddess of life. He says a line about Nu being amazing. He says that was his expected reaction from her. Luna blushes at this and tries to deny it. Unlike Captain Love, Luna really enjoys this kind of pose by our MC. Peace smirks saying calculating damage and considering the game's programming is not really fun. Instead, he enjoys the game as it is. Unable to make a reply, Luna sighs and finally grins. Back to her usual self, she compliments Noob in a very roundabout way. Of course, those words can be irritating and Peace says so. He even adds how Luna might as well accuse him of hacking the game. Luna's expression changes, saying that hacking the game might have been better since one can quickly kill them. But in the case of Nu, who has all his stats maxed out on top of having healing factor, speed of light, soul of giant, and other OP skills. All of these defy the overall game balance, and Luna adds that the root cause is the plus 99 reinforced wooden stick. She reiterates how Nu's very existence within the game is an error code. I swear these harsh words came out from the same woman who's crying earlier. She tells him to tell her if she is wrong, as always, Peace says she is. Peace tells her how the CEO of Chrono Life even went out of his way to let him know that there's nothing wrong with his character. Suddenly, Peace leaps into the air, having enough of the BS talk, and uses Swing Down on the Goddess of Life. Luna only smiles at this as a loud explosion resounds in the realm. Peace watches over the explosion when Luna reappears behind him and admits that she might have been a bit too harsh due to her emotions. She knows that Noob never used any bugs or hacks in the game, and Luna admires him for being honest despite being a loser. This earns her a glare from peace, but she's still not done. Luna says that even if everyone believes him, Mother doesn't feel the same. Peace asks who this mother is when he recalls his conversation with God. Luna is referring to the mother that the God of Destruction previously mentioned. Luna says how Mother deems peace as a bug in the world of Chrono Life, and because of this, Mother has inserted a vaccine to get rid of it. Luna opened her hand as she said this and suddenly said boom. Peace's head explodes, but the healing factor skill quickly activates to regenerate. Peace is pissed that he got compared to a bug and dashes to attack. But before he could even do so, a flash of green light appeared from the side, taking him completely off guard. Peace remains standing, but once again, a massive chunk of his HP disappeared due to the attack. Getting sick of this tandem, Peace seriously gets irritated. Luna only laughs at this, 
asking what Noob can do about it when there's obviously no way he can do anything. Acting all cute, Luna suggests Noob to prostrate himself and lick her heels, and she might make it easy for him. This woman is going overboard. Peace curses at her, and he instantly appears behind Luna, saying she should wash her pretty little head instead. The goddess of life is shocked to find peace behind her, knowing full well that he can't do this even with the speed of light. Overthrowing her expectations, another noob appears before her, saying this isn't the speed of light. Luna's mouth falls open at the sight before her. There is more than one piece before her. I bet the goddess of life enjoys having a lot of GUs surrounding her. This is a true treasure, for sure. Peace surrounds Luna in the colossal monster form of the Good of Destruction, with numerous clones of his. Luna falters as she realizes Noob used Habake's fourth mirror, the Mirror of Clones. Luna's wings disappear as Peace hugs her from the back, making her blush at the sudden move. Her heart starts racing at the touch, but the devious look on Peace's says it all. While holding onto the Goddess of Life, a copy of him starts playing by whacking Luna in the head. He strikes using his so-called secret technique, Strike Without Killing. Other clones join in the fun and continuously whack Luna in the head. It happened numerous times that one can't keep count of it. With her distorted face, she yells for him to stop and begs to be killed. Peace doesn't relent since he knows that even if he slays her, she'll just be back in one piece using her skill, the creation of life. With a crazy look in his eyes, Peace announces that he only wants to see her getting tortured. Tears pool in the goddess of life's eyes, knowing that Peace will make true of his words. Countless Peace laughs grimly at her demise, and Luna shivers at the sight of that wooden stick. That shadow is kinda M. Luna pleads and can only yell since there is no way Noob would listen to her this time. At that moment, our MC realized that Strike Without Killing is a gift meant to be used at that very moment. Our MC's disgusting face is filled with glee as it prepares another attack. Luna can only watch with an open mouth as Peace prepares to attack. He then bangs her with his weapon, making her face distort once more in pain. One clone flies up in the air with that weird look of ecstasy on his face, but seeing this only scared the goddess of life, knowing what comes next. Peace jumps down and whacks her with his stick. It's kinda cool that even the plus 99 reinforced wooden stick is also cloned. Another clone wearing a baseball hat with 389 on it prepares to bat with his stick. With the swing of his wooden stick, he hits the goddess of life's face with significant impact. What happened within the godly realm can only be described as madness. The usual quiet realm is filled with the noise of our MC's lunacy. He relishes every hit he releases of the goddess of life, refusing to end the sheer happiness he's experiencing by knocking her noggin. I bet he got this idea back when he did this to riot in heavenly realm. This act was justified in his head as he recalled how Luna humiliated and insulted him. Though he did get his vengeance previously when he destroyed the planet, what happened back then was instantaneous that it wasn't able to fill the void in his heart. Peace laughs maniacally as he announces that he'll now have his proper revenge. He playfully announces his enjoyment, while Luna can only watch him with despair. She closed her eyes and finally stopped resisting, accepting whatever peace threw at her. She can now only pray, hoping that this will soon end. As the clones continue to bonk her in the head, Peace laughs, seeing that he's done with her. He then looks at the God of Destruction, who is similarly surrounded by a significant number of Peace's clones. The colossal monster's eye flashes as it shoots another attack on the clones. Though they disappear due to the attack, Regenerating them is easy because they are clones. This confuses the enemy, and numerous peace announces that the enemy can try killing him. Still, he will keep using the mirror of clones on himself. Good thing our MC thought of taking this from Habak, it's proving helpful in this fight. Confused, the enemy can only watch as one of the clones attacks him with a swing down. Another clone uses swing up. And finally, each clone firmly grasps his weapon and announces a million strikes. The attack creates a massive explosion within the godly realm, and the enemy can only accept the attack and be burnt to a crisp. Seeing this, Peace deactivates the Mirror of Clones. Completely satisfied with the outcome, he drops back down to the ground and announces the completion of Phase 2. He looks back and asks Roach Lady what she'll do now. Lumen is sitting on the ground, still crying from her previous ordeal, a bit irritated. She acknowledges Noob's victory. She admits how she expected him to do this much. What she didn't expect was his struggle halfway to overcoming it. She tells him to try harder next time. This irks peace. So he pulls up his weapon and announces strike without killing. Luna flinches upon hearing this, already traumatized by what happened. This is literally like Riot after getting hit numerous times in the head. Peace doesn't bring down his weapon on her. Instead, he warns her to watch, or she'll get another smack. 
Luna shudders in fear at the thought of getting hit with that wooden stick once more. A flash of green light catches Peace's attention, and he watches as the remains of the colossal monster light up brightly. Lumina also sees this and says that it's finally begun, Phase 3. Peace looks at her in askance. The bright green light shoots up, suddenly buzzing and disappearing as if engulfed by water. Peace looks up with surprise, the enemy is completely gone from the godly realm. He thinks of the worst, and Luna confirms his thoughts. She reveals that Phase 3 will take place in the human realm. That's literally bad news. Love looks up in surprise, and the same goes for every other being in the human realm. Riot regained consciousness, and he and everyone looked up at the giant blob of flesh floating in the air. Riot clenches his teeth, realizing what it is. He had hoped that the brave warrior would finish everything outside the human realm. The floating mass of meteor-like flesh rumbles as a part of it wriggles. Riot's eyes widen as the large mass of it drops at a fast speed. He quickly warns everyone to run away, but it is too late. The falling flesh is almost upon them, and they can barely do anything as it drops and makes an impact on the ground. It causes great destruction, akin to Pease's attacks. Hongsil, the writer of this manhwa, along with Chippery, the artist, and the other users, fly off the tremendous impact. In the godly realm, Peace takes hold of Lumen and asks what she is doing. He commands her to open a portal to get them back on their dimension. But Lumina looks down as she said as she can't. Peace doesn't believe this and reminds her how she summoned that thing before. The Goddess of Life explains that she didn't precisely summon it. Instead, she only set up its coordinates for its powers. She adds how God is the only one who can open up the portals between this realm and the other. Wait, what? I thought Luna could do the same since she had previously gone to other realms. Were all of her previous actions aided by God? Peace groans at the futility and pushes Luna away. The Goddess of Life falls to the ground, while Peace activates the Ember of All Creation skill. He instructs it to show him the front village, and the fire blazes as it shows him the enormous greenish flesh. Peace asks if that is an asteroid, irritated that the Ember is not showing him the front village. Luna sits up and looks at him, reminding him of Phase 3. She says the continent of Chromium must face the final battle without him. Back in the human realm, the smoke dissipates as Star slowly opens her eyes. Her eyes widen as she finds Riot holding up a barrier for her and Eurus. Star and Eurus are surprised and Riot calls up as he explains that it is a barrier spell. Star asks if he just saved her. Riot explains how he owes her his life and as an angel. He is indebted to her for as long as he lives. He reminds her how she saved him with all those sweet potatoes. What I remember is him choking as he is forced to eat those. Riot slips down, breaking the barrier. Star shouts for him worriedly. Eurus observes how Riot is already low in power and warns him not to overexert himself. He adds how Riot could easily run on his own. Star looks at Riot with worry and finally notices all of the other users who have fallen from the impact just now. Tears overflow in Star's eyes as she sees this. Users groan on the ground, barely alive at what happened. Riot fully knows that he has let his guard down since he never expected the enemy to show up quickly. A part of the enemy wriggles, and Star wonders what it is, Suddenly a part of it sloshes out of the enormous mass and drops near them. It looks like a meteor popping out a baby meteor. Star stutters as she asks what that thing is, and Riot only shouts to run away. Suddenly, Star was stabbed, but she still managed to throw Eurus off her. Star cries and calls for the wooden stick man. The previous smaller blob has turned into a huge bug-like enemy with pincers. Back in the godly realm, Peace's face darkens after seeing what happened. Angered at what happened to Star, he curses at his enemy with pure hatred. Uh, oh, killing Star is a big no-no in our MC's books. Mint Chocolate waves as she greets everyone and introduces herself as the recent winner of the Royal Battle Tourney, which our MC didn't even know about. She shares her accomplishments and raves about the recently fun days playing Chrono Life. Despite the row of in-game events, she's enjoying herself a lot and retells some details of what happened so far. Her expression changes when she reaches the part about the last quest wondering if the game will shut down once it is all done. She smiles cutely as she announces her disbelief at this happening. She adds how there's no way this would happen since Chrono Life is famous for being the number one game in the world, and shutting the game this way is too anticlimactic. Going back to her discussion of the green monster god, she tells how the brave warrior went to the godly realm to beat up the monster on his own. Everyone felt relieved by this, but an unexpected twist brought a meteor that exploded on impact, injuring and slaying most users within the area. Min Chaco says she was able to quickly run away from it, but most users were unfortunate. She adds how the meteor even spits out an egg, an egg of a nasty bug. 
Her narration was halted when Mr. PT called for her to help out instead of talking to the air. Fist T is helping out the other users by feeding them HP potions. Minchako complies and is about to help when they hear Riot shouting for Star to run away. They saw Star get stabbed by the egg that Minchako just mentioned. Riot looks over at Star, lying lifeless on the ground. The bug-like enemy screeches while Riot remains frozen. Remembering his promise that is now broken, he clenches his teeth, and his surroundings rumble as he stands up, angered by what happened. A notification appears at his attempt to forcefully unseal his angel power. What Riot is attempting is dangerous for him, but he persists as a glow of light appears on top of his head. It starts to circle on his head, forming a halo. Riot angrily glares at the enemy as his angel power is unleashed, turning him once more into someone akin to his Super Saiyan. The enemy is confused about what it's seeing. Riot announces that the enemy will not be forgiven for hurting Star. In his anger, he recalls his first meeting with Star and unleashes more energy. The fallen Star is now recovered and asks Riot when it was about her. This surprises Riot to the point that he stops releasing energy, and his halo disappears as his angel power activation gets cancelled. His Super Saiyan is short-lived. Riot looks at her and where she was lying down before. He asks if that is her dead body. Star laughs at his flustered face, reminding him this is a game. She says that she just logged back in after her character died. Riot realizes what happened, his face getting realistic. Back in the godly realm, Luna chuckles at seeing this, commenting how some really just get into a game too much. She feels embarrassed for Riot and asks if Noob feels the same. Recovering from his embarrassment, Peace agrees to her while laughing it off. Our MC is not being honest. He was so angry just a moment ago. Getting back to where the God of Destruction is, the enemy roars and closes in on Riot and Star. Not wanting to see Star's lifeless body once more, Riot quickly grabs her by the waist and jumps up before they get hit by the enemy's attack. Riot raises a flashing hand while in mid-air and uses his skill, Spear of Lightning. Like what it's called, a spear of bright lightning falls upon the enemy, frying it up. Star exclaims at the show of one of the high-level lightning spells, complimenting Riot for being strong. Instead of being happy with a compliment, Riot is nervous and curses inside for the limitation of his ability. He knows it is pathetic and can only hope that his attack somehow worked. They look down at the smoke, but a flash of green light appears and shoots up at them. Seeing this, Riot immediately dodges with Star, but that attack grazes him. Riot groans in pain while Star worriedly shouts for him. Not yet done. The enemy's eye lights up again and shoots at them. Star screams as she and Riot can only close their eyes, waiting for impact. A hand shines bright as wind is summoned. Minchaka was able to save the two from getting hit. Woo, that's amazing. She literally saved them using a basic skill. The enemy is surprised by this, while Star and Riot gently drop to the ground. Riot asks if Star is okay. She replies that she is and thanks him. Suddenly, the sounds of fast steps get close and Minchaka swings her broad sword at the enemy's eye. At the impact, Mint Chaco tears up and trembles in pain. She comments on how hard the nasty bug is. This kind of attack is not something the enemy will take lightly. It releases its pincer with a tentacle-like limb. It attacks Mint Chaco, but she manages to evade it. As she leaps up, she ponders if the enemy has reinforced defense or if it is resistant to physical attacks. Either way, Mint Chaco knows this is a losing battle for her. She is well aware of this because her main attacks are primarily physical in nature. At the same time, her magic is meant chiefly as her support. Despite knowing this, she tells Riot and Star to run away, admitting she can only buy some time for them. A laughing suddenly distracts them as a guy announces his arrival like all might usually do. Minchaka looks up and finds Feisty. She asks what took him so long, and Mr. PT laughs as he apologizes for making her wait. They really are a duo. He explains that he had to help everyone injured and didn't expect many of them. Seeing a ton of other fallen users, Mr. PT uses Sanctuary, healing all the targets within the area. The HP of the fallen users got replenished at its activation, and they began surrounding the enemy with their number. The enemy exclaims its surprise as he sees the users all angry at him. Seriously, this enemy is easily surprised. It likely lacks the full intelligence of the God of Destruction. All the users glare at the bug, saying they've seen everything even though they were on the ground. As if of one mind, multiple users talk about how there is one person in Chrono life that shouldn't be messed with. They announce that they don't care if the enemy is a bug, a god, or whatever. But messing with that little girl crosses the line. Everyone expresses their anger for hurting their little star, and they simultaneously unleash attacks on the bug before them. Returning to our MC, who's stuck in the godly realm with the goddess of life, Peace grins as he watches the users beat up the bug that hurts star. Like a proud dad, 
He compliments Star for everyone loving her. Luna looks at him with a smile and says this is an opportunity for everyone to join forces. Peace grins at her as he deactivates the Ember of all creation. He suddenly grabs the Goddess of Life by the neck, telling her to shut up, and reminds her that she can't just say whatever just because he's laughing along. Yep, our MC is simply going with the flow, but deep inside, he still detests her. Luna tears up and coughs in pain while Peace threatens her to reveal how they can get out of that place. He says he'll break her neck if she doesn't. Luna is in pain, yet she still manages to smile and even chuckle as she says how there's no way to get out of that realm. She adds how if Noob dies there, he'll only revive in that place. Luna says it's only him and her in that place, alone together forever. She describes it as their Garden of Eden, where Noob is Adam, and she is Eve. I think Luna forgot how those two got banished from Eden. Also, I'm pretty sure there's three of them in that place. Luna promises it and hugs Peace despite his hold on her neck. She claims it is destiny, and she is about to kiss him. But Peace is not having any of her crap and just tightens his hold on her as promised. Knowing full well that she's okay despite this, he makes true of his words. Luna then appears behind him, completely fine. She chuckles and tells him not to be shy. She blushes as she says she knows Noob is jumping for joy inside since he can be a lover with someone as beautiful as her. The goddess of life before peace turns to ashes, as he says he doesn't give a crap about her. Luna asks if he is sure and he promises to give everything to Noob if they become lovers. She adds that she is willing to do so for the rest of her life since she only needs him. For someone who played with our MC's heart before, she's really shameless. Peace looks blankly at her and scratches his head. He sighs, knowing his words won't get through to this woman. Opting for another method, Peace once again hugs Luna from the back and activates the Mirror of Clones. He makes a clone and says that only his wooden stick could make her think straight. He uses Strike without killing on her and bonks her head. But unlike before, Luna turns into ashes with the attack. What then? How did she die from Strike without killing? Peace looks with confusion in his eyes, realizing that she dies in that attack. Using the divinity of life, Luna recreates a new physical form. She smiles at him, saying that Strike without killing no longer works on her. She mocks him for thinking that it will work forever. But Peace doesn't give a crap and simply hits her in the head again with the same skill. Like before, her form turns to ashes. This only confuses Peace more since he even made sure to hold back. His eyes widen as understanding dawn on him. Seeing this look on his face, Luna comments on how she got caught. Peace expresses his surprise and admits how he didn't think that strike without killing could be countered with that. Don't keep us in suspense. What's the trick behind Luna's counter? Luna rubs her head, saying she had a hard time since strike without killing felt like a skill meant just for her. She then says there is no perfect skill in Chroma life, so there is a way to deal with things. The goddess of life comments on the viciousness of the skill, strike without killing. Shigun gives their little show the title, the horribly slow murderer with extremely inefficient weapon. How apt. Luna explains how even if Nu holds back his attacks, there is no doubt that it will inflict at least one damage point to the target. Peace agrees, saying that is the point of strike without killing. He then admits that he never thought Roach Lady would use that as the primary focus to counter his skill, and he complimented her with a slight frown. Peace then reveals how she made her maximum life into one HP. What now? That kind of thing is possible, 